Okay, I see the <clears throat> the recording has started, so that means that uh, I can start as well. So uh, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome once again. Uh, it's nice to see uh, a lot of you uh, here today uh, for our second lecture. Uh, just a second, let me. Uh, oh. Okay, slideshow. Yes, okay. Uh, okay, so uh, welcome once again. Good evening. Uh, for any of you that maybe skipped uh, last week, uh, my name is Tomislav Pukšec uh, from uh, Faculty of Mechanical Engineering uh, and Na Naval Architecture from Zagreb University. And uh, today, uh, uh, my job is to uh, discuss and talk about uh, risk and vulnerability assessment or uh, RVA. Uh, it's, uh, I would say, <clears throat> more or less uh, a continuation uh, of our, uh, let's say, environmental uh, mitigation adaptation uh, uh, discussion. Now, today, it's uh, we are switching or we are changing uh, the the scope uh, and uh, let's say the the system uh, because last week uh, when we discussed ESG uh, we were focused on uh, uh, companies so uh, private companies public companies and so on but today <clears throat> uh, we are shifting uh, a little bit and uh, more or less today we will be focused on uh, cities uh, regional local government although risk and vulnerability assessment uh, can be done uh, uh, in the corporate wo world as well. But uh, our focus today will be primarily uh, on, uh, let's say, municipal, city, city level or a regional level. Uh, why? I mean, we are more or less uh, the, 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 we're back tracing the, the issue from our, our, our local uh, a local sustainable or lo local energy and climate planning. Uh, I don't know how many of you are uh, in this field, but uh, basically uh, any uh, any local community, city or, or municipality uh, that wants to work on different kinds of sustainability or climate issues, uh, more or less uh, uh, is doing it on the local level in a form of energy planning. Uh, what we will show uh, at the end of the lecture today, we will give, uh, let's say, uh, 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 an example. Uh, I found uh, we, we will just uh, go very quickly uh, through uh, the methodology. Uh, we will show uh, where is this risk and vulnerability assessment primarily uh, placed uh, through uh, SEPs, SECAPs. Uh, and then, uh, so sustainable energy uh, action plan or sustainable energy and climate action plan. This is something that uh, cities are uh, drafting uh, uh, on the EU level, but even uh, outside EU as well. Uh, and until now, usually we were talking about uh, energy planning, but now the European Commission basically does not recognize energy planning uh, without climate planning. So uh, I don't know if you noticed, but there's no more energy strategies uh, in the EU. Now everything is uh, uh, it's energy and climate. So it's national energy and climate plans. So there's no more energy strategies. So and risk and vulnerability assessment is, uh, let's say, an integral part of this process. So that's why uh, we will focus especially on that today. Uh, so local regional climate and energy planning where evaluating risks and vulnerability due to different kind of climate change impacts uh, is a critical one of the critical uh, steps because after all based on this you can draft or think about any kind of uh, mitigation options that you want to implement uh, uh, in the in the future okay uh, so <clears throat> uh, for today uh, of course, uh, we will do uh, a short introduction uh, about uh, RVA. Uh, 
just for you to have an idea uh, about where about what we're talking about. Uh, then we will go through some of the terms uh, that are used in the risk and uh, vulnerability assessment. Uh, why do we make RVAs, uh, risk assessment, vulnerability assessment? Then we will conduct risk and vulnerability assessment step by step, just for you to have an idea. It's more or less a similar, uh, similar situation like we had with ESG last week, just for you to see uh, what are the key aspects and key steps uh, uh, in drafting uh, in drafting um, uh, this assessment? Uh, and uh, at the end, as I said, I will give you uh, a very a short example, uh, and we will uh, uh, we will just uh, very quickly go through risk and vulnerability assessment of city of Belgrade, which might be a nice thing just for you to. Uh, uh, just for you to see how it actually looks and where is it placed. Uh, and uh, after me, then uh, uh, Anna will uh, take over. Uh, she will give you certain points uh, regarding last week uh, assignment, give you some update information, etc. And uh, discuss uh, for uh, discuss about uh, this this week's uh, assignment. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> we can uh, we can uh, uh, we can start then. Uh, well, for the introduction part, uh, you can find different kind of uh, uh, different kind of definitions in the literature. Uh, but generally, when we talk about um, RVAs, climate change risk and vulnerability assessment, it's a process used to evaluate the potential impacts of climate change on a particular region sector or a system, so uh, it can be much wider term and identify the risks and vulnerabilities associated with those impacts. So that's like a general uh, definition that you would probably find uh, in the literature, although there are. Uh, we can expand this in a way which we will uh, later on uh, during the course. Uh, at the very uh, beginning, uh, just maybe uh, a wider, uh, a wider uh, background uh, of uh, RVA and uh, where does it come from? So uh, basically a lot of terms that we will use today, like uh, sensitivity, uh, adaptive capacity, exposure, uh, hazards, etc. Uh, before we define them, just maybe a, a, a short introduction on how uh, did we get to all those terms? So basically, uh, the methodology, uh, the logics, the background uh, more or less comes from uh, IPCC and uh, their uh, assessment reports and uh, some uh, citing documents that follow these uh, assessment reports. So I, I don't know if if anyone, if someone didn't hear or don't know what IPCC is, it's Intergovernmental Panel uh, on Climate Change, and one of the key issues what they do is actually they draft their assessment reports. Currently, we are under uh, assessment report uh, six, which uh, came out in 2022, so last year. And uh, the fifth one was eight years before, so in 2014. Uh, it's, uh, it's like a very uh, huge, baggy, uh, uh, it, it's it's uh, uh, very uh, very uh, systematic where a hundred of authors uh, go into different kind of models per per uh, per review uh, papers other materials and they draft uh, draft this report. Uh, the first tranche of this report uh, last year uh, when it came uh, when it came out. Uh, is on physical science, climate systems, climate change, etc. So from today's perspective, uh, what we're talking about today is not so important. But the second tranche of assessment report is actually what is important uh, 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 for us today, because the second tranche reports on the impacts uh, of that climate change and on the adaptation and on vulnerability to that climate uh, uh, climate change. So basically, this second tranche is is what we will be discussing uh, today through our RVAs 
uh, a little bit uh, a little bit uh, more. The the third part, uh, the third trench is just uh, a synthesis of of the above, but uh, we will not go uh, we will not go uh, into uh, into big uh, details. Uh, maybe just uh, a few more uh, words on that on the report itself. Uh, basically, the the report didn't uh, disclose things that we didn't know. I mean, it, it confirmed what we already know, more or less, at least people that are uh, in the field, that the damages from climate change are occurring already and uh, we are facing them uh, quite, uh, uh, quite a lot. And uh, one of the uh, messages from the report is that things are actually getting uh, worse, where we see and we can observe increase in extreme uh, high temperatures uh, in land and sea, uh, droughts, different kind of extreme weather uh, conditions, wildfires, uh, etc. And all of those things in a way affect people, animals, planet, uh, plants uh, overall. Uh, and we have uh, a certain results uh, because of this uh, because of this uh, impacts or climate change impacts is that uh, people are moving, uh, the animals are going to uh, higher latitudes, higher altitudes, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Currently, uh, temperatures are 1.1 or 1.3 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial level, uh, and some natural systems are actually approaching to their capacity to adapt. So we already see some coral reef, reefs, rainforests, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the 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 way how to analyze uh, what are the risks uh, and vulnerabilities and how to adapt to them uh, becomes uh, a very uh, very uh, important uh, important uh, thing. Uh, so. When it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, the the methodology or the framework itself, so basically the framework uh, uh, assumes that the risk of climate related impacts uh, uh, results from the interaction of climate related hazards. And here, uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to risks, we can. On the next slide, we will maybe go a little bit deeper into that, but it, it's basically a function of this three main, uh, uh, three main uh, 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 things, which is hazards, exposure, uh, and vulnerability uh, uh, of human and natural uh, natural systems. And changes in the climate system, uh, biophysical system, or socioeconomic processes, are actually drivers of hazard hazardous exposure and vulnerability. So basically this is something uh, you have to uh, 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 you have to uh, always uh, have in mind. And the potential threat uh, is to people, property, livelihoods uh, and the environment uh, on which they of course depend. Uh, so terms uh, we use uh, in uh, RVA uh, so some of the Key things here. One of the things is climate uh, 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 climate risk, uh, which, as I said, it's defined ma mathematically. We can say it's it's a function of expected potential impacts hazards uh, of climate extremes, system vulnerability, uh, and uh, and uh, the exposure. Uh, so, on the other hand, when we talk about uh, hazard. Hazard is a physical process or a, uh, or a event. So it's a hydrometeorological or oceanographic uh, uh, variable or, or phenomenon uh, that can harm human health, uh, our livelihoods, uh, uh, and natural, uh, 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 natural uh, 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 resources. Uh, for the purposes of, uh, for the purposes of, uh, for instance, investment planning. Uh, when uh, you see in different kind of analysis, uh, the term hazard may be referred to as climate related uh, physical event uh, uh, or some kind of trend. 
So basically, these are the 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 main uh, the main uh, 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 definitions that we will be using uh, uh, today when we talk about uh, drafting the uh, uh, when we talk about the drafting the uh, RVA. Uh, when it comes to climate change vulnerability. Uh, I think IPCC maybe has the best uh, uh, definition. IPCC uh, uh, is defining climate change vulnerability as a, a susceptibility of a species, system or a resource uh, to the negative effects of climate change and uh, other stressors and include, includes three uh, main components. So it's exposure, it's uh, sensitivity, uh, and it's uh, adaptive capacity. So how well can a system adapt to all of those things that uh, are happening? So when it comes to exposure, it's actually the amount and let's say rate of change uh, that a species or a system uh, experiences from the direct uh, impacts uh, or indirect impacts. So when we talk about what are the uh, direct impacts uh, here? Well, it's a temperature a change, a pre precipitation change. Uh, what are the indirect impacts? Well, I mean, uh, if uh, a habitat shifts uh, due to uh, changing vegetation composition, so due to uh, uh, changes in the temperature, uh, uh, habitats also needs to shift uh, in order in order to adapt to to the new situation. Uh, on the other hand, next to exposure, it's uh, very important to understand uh, the term uh, sensitivity because sensitivity uh, refers to characteristics of a, in this case, uh, let's say species or a system uh, that are dependent dependent uh, on specific environmental conditions and the degree uh, to which it will likely be affected by climate change. So uh, let's say we can talk about temperature, we can talk about hydrological requirements, etc. And finally, uh, what is uh, very uh, important here, it's actually, it's actually the uh, adaptive uh, cap uh, capacity. So it's basically ability of a system or a species to cope uh, uh, under different kind of changing conditions through local, regional uh, acclimatization, uh, uh, migration, adaptation. Uh, when we talk about strictly biological uh, conditions, here we can even here we can even mention the term uh, evolution because uh, adaptive capacity to climate change uh, issues can be manifested uh, through uh, even evolutionary conditions, especially in some animals or, or plants that are uh, trying to cope with, uh, with the climate change uh, situation. So uh, the, the issue is uh, why do we make uh, RVA. Uh, so it's it's a, a way of systemizing measures, prioritizing uh, them in order to to uh, 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 in order to uh, uh, put uh, the resources uh, in uh, or use the resources in the most uh, efficient way. Uh, that, so we need to identify which regions, sectors or system components are particularly affected by climate change. And in sense of prioritization, where do we uh, where do we act first? So on one side, we have different kind of climate uh, impacts uh, that we try to uh, neutralize. On the other hand, with different kind of adaptive uh, measures uh, uh, in order to to balance everything out, uh, of course it's 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 uh, unfortunately not uh, uh, not so simple because 
uh, adaptation is still uh, uh, much uh, lower than the, the uh, mitigation process. Not, not the mitigation process, but the climate change climate change process. Uh, the ch changes here uh, are uh, not slow and they're not gradual. They are becoming more violent and more quick. Uh, uh, so we are facing, as I said, extreme weather, climate conditions, and it's more or less contributing to the overall crisis where we have uh, floods, uh, shortage of foods, uh, so worsening food insecurity and malnutrition uh, uh, that are worsened by the droughts, for instance, in Africa, Latin America, uh, and etc. Uh, the analysis show actually uh, one one positive thing in in all of this is that uh, some things could could even be worse. Uh, what does it mean? I mean, uh, if if you look at some papers and and if you look at some research. Uh, some effects uh, towards development and climate adaptation have actually reduced vulnerability uh, to climate change uh, and are actually uh, pushing uh, different kind of uh, adaptations, uh, adaptation measures everywhere, which is a positive thing. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the impacts of, of, of climate change uh, are uh, increasing at a rate that uh, outpaces uh, those improvements that we are currently do uh, at the adaptation side. Of course, that doesn't mean that we should stop uh, working uh, on the adaptation. Of course not. But uh, currently, uh, unfortunately, uh, climate change impact still uh, is uh, something that is much, uh, much more, uh, 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 much stronger than any kind of uh, adaptation uh, measures. So here, uh, before we get into the assessment itself, uh, two things. So uh, one thing is risk assessment, and another thing is uh, vulnerability uh, vulnerability assessment. So when we talk about uh, risk assessment, uh, uh, we create awareness of different hazards and risks to city, municipality, company, etc., and this then allows us uh, to properly identify what or who uh, uh, is at risk uh, and see what kind of tools are necessary to mitigate those risks. So here example is extreme weather events, uh, heat waves, sea level rise, erosion, biodiversity loss, etc. etc. Uh, so we have this uh, risk assessment. And then on the other side, uh, we have vulnerability assessment. Uh, it's also it also deals with understanding threats, but it's more on the internal uh, uh, internal side. So instead of looking at external threats like risk assessment does, a vulnerability assessment take care of identifying internal vulnerability that could turn into threats. So basically, you you need to see how those do, how does those uh, risks uh, uh, influence you and what is the vulnerability to those threats. So examples of climate vulnerability, vulnerability of water and heat supply infrastructure due to floods, for instance, vulnerability related to human health issues due to urban uh, heat islands, etc, etc. OK, so uh, the the issue is. <clears throat> so the, the, the next uh, issue, what we should uh, 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 discuss is how to conduct a risk and vulnerability, uh, risk and vulnerability uh, uh, assessment. So the and why do we actually need the assessment? Uh, and why is it so important to have it systemized in a way that you understand uh, what is going on? Well, on, on one hand, uh, acting quickly uh, may come at the cost of neglecting plans for the long term or for the, or or for the long run so <coughs> sorry what does that mean so actions designed to lower immediate risks can reduce the opportunity uh, for some truly transformational uh, adaptations uh, measures that would 
bring much more positive things in the in the uh, uh, in in the long run. Uh, uh, IPCC calls that uh, 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 maladaptation, uh, which uh, at the end uh, actually says that climate impacts do more harm than good uh, uh, if not addressed properly and systematically through some kind of assessment. So we can uh, 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 we can uh, have an example, for instance, uh, uh, what would be a, a very typical example. So uh, you can uh, you can build uh, some kind of uh, a wall or a, or a seawall uh, that would protect a, a certain city uh, from uh, a storm uh, surges from uh, rising sea level, etc. But on the other hand, uh, by doing this, uh, you might also change the pattern of uh, currents uh, by the coast, or you can create uh, a, a terrible erosion uh, uh, somewhere else. Uh, so it's it's very uh, important to to have uh, a much wider idea of the impacts and the scopes of measures that you uh, try to implement uh, regarding adaptation uh, to climate change risks. Uh, also, uh, if not planned properly, uh, some of the measures uh, might also create a false sense of security. Uh, for instance, we we have unfortunately we have this situation. For instance, in uh, Bangladesh, where uh, in, in the floodplain uh, in Bangladesh, uh, the presence of uh, leaves uh, leaves um, uh, in Croatia um, uh, it's uh, nasip nasipi uzrieku. Uh, so leaves uh, uh, that uh, borderlines uh, uh, rivers. Uh, so by doing them. Uh, you attract more people to live in a very dense populated area and creating uh, a false sense of security. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, you are increasing the number of deaths as a result of uh, leaves uh, breaking up and uh, doing uh, much more terrible uh, 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 floods. Uh, one of the uh, very... Uh, uh, good examples in this is, uh, for instance, if you start uh, um, irrigation systems uh, on a certain river uh, in in an area where the rain can no longer no longer be relied uh, upon to grow crops, uh, it could lead to overconsumption of the river water, uh, and then you would have a side effect. On the other side, leaving people downstream uh, uh, with less. So, in choosing the right solution, we need to be thinking about uh, more than just one climate hazard, uh, but we need to talk, think about uh, a wider range of side effects or, or interventions and what kind of impact uh, would they have uh, in the overall uh, in the overall system. So let's uh, let's now try to uh, go through uh, our steps and try to see what are the main steps uh, when we are uh, trying to draft climate uh, risk and vulnerability uh, assessment for let's say a region. So uh, step one is uh, it's uh, quite similar to all of those uh, 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 all of those procedures like we had in ESG or any other uh, ISO climate or energy uh, related issues. So you are trying to logically identify, identify something, uh, quantify it, project it uh, to the future, uh, uh, see their impact, uh, uh, try to see the overall, uh, uh, overall conditions and numbers based on certain measures, and then you try to reevaluate. Similar situation is here maybe a little bit uh, uh, specific in some uh, in some areas. So uh, step number one is actually recognizing past and present climate impacts. So it's it's very important to know uh, your uh, let's say baseline situation. So you need to uh, be aware about uh, extreme weather events that have happened in the past. 
in, in mathematical terms, it's it's more or less statistics. You know, you, you need to find a certain pattern. Uh, uh, you can compare it to some kind of regression analysis or, 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 or trend line analysis where you try to find patterns from historical data in order to uh, to conclude uh, what are the actual uh, risks in order to get a better understanding on the current risks and uh, uh, most uh, importantly uh, uh, in the next steps try to see how to predict uh, uh, those uh, conditions in the future uh, because you can have a situation that current risks uh, would fade out which is a possibility in some uh, uh, climate change uh, uh, climate change uh, hazards but you can also have uh, certain uh, hazards or climate impacts that uh, that would progress and intensify in the in the uh, uh, in the future so you need to know uh, 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 your your baseline in a sense of uh, uh, what are the main uh, main uh, 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 hazards and impacts uh, okay when you do the first part and you have an idea of of the current uh, of the current uh, situation now comes the 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 projection of those uh, uh, of those hazards in the future because it's a key issue of adaptation because you are trying in, in climate change adaptation you're actually trying to adapt to something that will come of course, you do already have some uh, problematic uh, climate change uh, uh, occurrences that you are adapting at the moment, but the majority and the most problematic uh, things are actually something that is coming uh, with the rising temperatures, the rising sea levels, etc. So it's something that you always uh, try to project uh, uh, in the future in order to analyze how to uh, uh, how to adapt. So, for instance. Uh, in Croatia, uh, Slavonia, or in Serbia, uh, Vojvodina, it's like a place where you, uh, that is very developed regarding uh, agricultural production. So adapting or adaptation in this sense would be try to think about different kind of advanced irrigation systems that would probably uh, uh, alleviate uh, 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 increase in temperature that, that might happen in the uh, in the coming years uh, the key here uh, is okay you can have current climate impacts uh, that would intensify be more frequent uh, more extreme etc but also you can have uh, some totally new hazards that you didn't uh, uh, let's say map uh, in uh, step uh, in step number one, so you always uh, need to be prepared uh, uh, and map different kind of uh, different kind of impacts uh, that might occur in order to plan your uh, in order to plan your adaptation. So step three, we come to in a sense, let's say, uh, prioritization uh, of measures for adaptation. So. The present and projected impacts of climate change uh, affect cities, municipalities, etc. But sectors are likely to be more affected due to their higher vulnerability or lower capacity to uh, adapt. I wouldn't say sectors; it, it's it, or or we can say even wider, uh, wider uh, than that, because the ability of a given sector or a, a region or a country. To adapt to uh, uh, and cope with climate change impacts uh, is a function of different variables. So it's wealth, it's uh, it's uh, technology, it's information, skills, infrastructure, institutions, and the ability to spread the risks. Uh, and that's why identifying vulnerable sectors is very important to prioritize and focus the adaptation efforts. Here. Uh, unfortunately, we have one uh, 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 examples. I don't know if you remember. Uh, I think not last, but the summer before uh, we had this, we had those crazy summer extreme heats uh, where we had uh, a case at the same time in British Columbia in Canada 
where we had like freakishly high temperatures of almost, uh, I think it was like 49 or, or 50 degrees Celsius in British Columbia. Uh, and almost simultaneously at the same time, you had the same situation in Iraq. Uh, with temperatures of 50 degrees Celsius, people were protesting on the street against electricity cuts uh, because it was uh, 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 it was unstable because due to uh, air conditioning uh, and not enough development of the electricity grids. So it, it was actually it, it happened at the same time. But the problem here is that uh, Canada next year uh, has prepared different kind of resources uh, in order to prepare uh, and to alleviate uh, uh, this issue and adapt to this issue. Unfortunately, Iraq didn't have or don't have uh, financial uh, possibilities uh, to do that. So if you remember last year's uh, uh, COP uh, in, I think last year was in, uh, 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 it was in Glasgow, I think in Glasgow. Uh, one of the main things uh, was actually, uh, uh, and the discussion was quite heated over uh, what the convention called uh, loss and damage. So impacts which have already been felt uh, uh, all over uh, developing countries uh, and the way how to compensate uh, all of those uh, issues that are already uh, already uh, uh, happening. OK, so a uh, list of potential uh, vulnerable uh, urban sectors. So as I said, it's, it's very important to to uh, identify in order for us to adapt. So what would be a, a, a list of vulnerable urban sectors and, and their examples? So for instance, OK, we can we can try a few of them. Uh, for instance, uh, transport. Uh, I don't know if you remember last year, uh, the the River Rhine in in Germany was so low uh, that uh, actually the the transportation uh, with tugboats over uh, River Rhine was uh, not possible, uh, which affected uh, 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 a lot of uh, sectors, businesses, industries. Uh, cooling uh, of thermal power plants, nuclear power plants in France. So uh, huge impacts uh, of, of, of climate change uh, on, uh, uh, in this case, transport because the tugboats couldn't go, but also on energy and industry. So we couldn't transport different kind of raw materials to industry. We couldn't produce electricity in nuclear power plants in France because the rivers were too uh, low for uh, cooling processes. The, the thermal power plants in Germany uh, couldn't work properly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in buildings, for instance, um, uh, cooling issue is 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 like a first class uh, question when we talk about uh, climate change adaptation, because uh, at this point, still a relatively small amount of buildings are being cooled. Uh, especially in Europe or in uh, climates where we still have milder climates. But uh, as uh, climate change uh, uh, influences temperature rise, uh, issue of uh, cooling will be uh, extremely important. It will be a stress on the electricity system, uh, producing new electricity, etc., cetera, uh, etc. Cetera. Public health, uh, extreme temperatures, tourism, I think everybody in Croatia are, are very afraid what will happen with tourism when uh, we get uh, extreme weathers uh, increase in the sea level. So it's something that you need to think about and consider and and in a sense try to uh, try to adapt uh, in the in the in the future. OK, now we get to uh, actually conducting the assessment. So. Uh, um, more or less, we can talk about two main uh, two main methods. So one, we can talk about indicator based approach. So you use sets of different kind of predefined indicators that can be both quantitative, it can be qualitative and can be assessed both through uh, modeling, uh, different kind of consultation, different kind of uh, uh, stakeholder engagement 
which is uh, uh, very important from also perspective of today's lectures because uh, in my experience uh, uh, different kind of uh, local uh, energy and climate planning that includes uh, adaptation at least the cases which i witnessed in uh, western european countries they need high participatory action from uh, local communities stakeholders general public uh, because uh, adaptation matters matters uh, measures and uh, uh, mitigation measures are something that you need to uh, do in the local community so you need to communicate that properly uh, with the population uh, uh, of those uh, uh, of those areas. So just here an example of the indicator assessment vulnerabilities to heat waves. So for instance, uh, we have exposure sensitivity and what kind of response capacity we have. So we have high thermal uh, discomfort values. We have regarding sensitivity, so we have high share of vulnerable, vulnerable people and our uh, response capacity is let's say increasing the share of green urban areas for instance lack of green urban areas uh, we have high share of low income households uh, uh, with socioeconomic status so what do we do we need to decrease soil sealing as as one of the measures uh, uh, in order to solve that so uh, what if you have high degree of uh, soil sealing and we have high population numbers so it's it's not so simple to to do this classical measures when you have uh, soil sealing so it's commitment to fight climate change awareness uh, and trust in the city governments communication with the local uh, local population etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, here uh, also examples of risk vulnerability based on indicator based based assessment so here you try to define uh, probability uh, effect level and time frames for each of the uh, each of the cases. So, for instance, for healthcare uh, in the medium term, uh, for instance, heat islands in the cities. Medium term, the uh, level uh, expected level is moderate, moderate, but it's very likely. So, it will very likely happen uh, in the medium term. Uh, but uh, for instance, uh, uh, let's say. Uh, 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 transport or or, or buildings uh, or uh, environment uh, and and bio uh, biodiversity or industry uh, it might be uh, 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 unlikely or or maybe not uh, or probably uh, and the mod it will be not so uh, high it, it might be lower it might be in the long run in the short term period etc etc so these are the things uh, that you uh, uh, associate to different so this probability uh, 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 expected level uh, uh, of effect time frames it's something that you uh, associate to different kind of uh, uh, risks uh, and uh, Consequently, uh, uh, adaptation uh, adaptation options. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to uh, second method, so we can talk about specially uh, explicit approach. Uh, I would say it's 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 a, a, a more a more scientific approach. It relies on climate impact models. Uh, in order for us to produce different kind of hazard maps. Uh, according to specific climate uh, uh, stressors, uh, biophysical attributes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I wouldn't say that uh, there's a better or a worse way. Uh, in a sense, a synergy between the two methods is something that that uh, uh, you should hope because it allows you to uh, have a better overview. Uh, uh, in the assessment process uh, uh, itself. So uh, here you can see uh, how this um, uh, uh, special uh, explicit impact uh, models look like. So you have uh, we have one case on a national uh, scale of vulnerability to drought. So you can and you can assess it uh, for a, a baseline. So current situation and you can project it uh, uh, for the future period. Here it's from uh, uh, to even to uh, uh, 200 uh, 
2100th year. So, and you you use different kind of uh, uh, variables. So in this case, uh, we have uh, water availability, we have sensitivity, and we have uh, adaptive capacity. Those uh, definitions that we already mentioned uh, uh, early uh, early on. So, uh, step number five is uh, more or less repetitive steps, repetitive steps that we already did uh, in one, two, and three, but now it's actually we try to assess uh, a wider impact uh, uh, that we have with our measures. Why? Because, I mean, city or, 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 or a region uh, in that matter is not a, a, an isolated place. So I, I, anything you do, or most of the things you do regarding uh, policies and uh, implementing measures is something uh, that will uh, that will uh, uh, influence uh, something else. We we had this example of um, uh, irrigation where you use the water and then uh, people downstream don't have enough, etc. So you always have uh, some kind of wider impact, and you need to at least try to quantify it in a sense so you know uh, what would be the impact of your policy or your measure uh, uh, in this case. So here we have steps that are more or less similar to, similar to steps one, two, and three. So recognition of past events. Uh, so trying to do a baseline uh, 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 situation. Uh, uh, recognition of past uh, impacts affected uh, other areas outside the city. Uh, then uh, understanding future impacts, but also now in a wide, uh, uh, wider uh, uh, geographical scope or, or, or wider, uh, wider range. And uh, assessing and selecting adoption, uh, adaptation, sorry, uh, options. Uh, and monitoring and uh, evaluation. So you need to be sure uh, that uh, your measures uh, regarding adaptation are actually doing those impacts that you thought they would do. And if they are not doing uh, or they are doing more harm that you, than you anticipated, then you need to uh, change the, the, the methodology or, or try, to, try to do another, uh, another step. Uh, so, uh, step number six, identifying uh, main adaptation concerns and defining uh, 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 object uh, objectives. So, the main issue to be considered in prioritizing which climate impacts uh, to address, they actually include. So, already occurring impacts, especially the ones that are projected to become worse uh, in the future. So. We actually need to know how to prioritize, or uh, we need to have some kind of indicators uh, based upon we will do some kind of prioritization because we don't have endless amount of money. I mean, if we have endless amount of money, then we would probably stop climate change. Uh, then we would probably not even need to do uh, adaptation, but we obviously don't. So we need to find some kind of prioritization uh, in order to choose which. Uh, policies uh, are uh, uh, are the best. So the likelihood and severity of impacts over the near term, the medium term, the long term, and uh, 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 whether the risk is within the mandate of the municipality or or stakeholders. So if if there's a possibility for you to include uh, your activities in something that is uh, in the mandate of the municipality. So for instance, now in, in, in Croatia, uh, NPOs is, is very popular. So this uh, 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 national uh, 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 plan Oporavka i Otpora. So national plan for uh, uh, resilience uh, 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 and recovery is, is a place where a lot of things are being financed, uh, financed infrastructural things as well. So. Uh, if it's possible to uh, include different kind of policies that complement uh, complement uh, uh, some of the actions that you're already implementing, you would have some kind of synergy uh, synergy synergy uh, effect. This is just an example uh, uh, that 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 we can see now uh, happening here. Uh, of course. When you do prioritization, uh, probably uh, uh, a risk that might affect the city irreversibly 
would probably be quite uh, high in your list uh, list of priorities. For instance, sea level rise. I mean, it's it's something that <laughs> needs to be dealt with, no matter no matter the cost. Uh, and of course, different kind of existing mechanisms that are aligned with adaptation action. So, uh, if you look at different kind of policies, directives, laws, bylaws, different kind of programs that are in place already and are contributing uh, to different kind of adaptation schemes. So if the government decides to uh, uh, co-finance the adaptation in the building sector for, for uh, citizens, then it's definitely something aligned with adaptation actions, because if you have a better uh, isolated uh, building, then uh, you would uh, be good on the mitigation side because you would uh, use less energy. But uh, on the adaptation side as well, I mean, uh, in the heat waves with your isolation, you would need less uh, energy for cooling and, and you would be uh, uh, better protected from this kind of uh, this kind of extremes. So. Maybe to summarize this issue, uh, the key uh, word or the key phrase here is integration in a sense. So how to integrate different kind of activities, different kind of policies in order to achieve uh, a maximum effect, not just from a technical point of view or policy point of view or emissions point of view, but from, of course, financial point of view uh, uh, as well. So uh, number seven is just let let us just uh, 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 go through the uh, go through the checklist uh, uh, and and see just to to uh, 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 to go through again the, the the main points. So systematic overview of past climate and extreme weather events, their consequences, and existing response actions. So baseline. So you need to know what is going on on your geographical area in your city, county, in your company. So what is the baseline uh, uh, regarding this? Then next, what are the future projections of climate change identified? And you need to understand different kind of uncertainties in those process. So it, it's not fortune telling uh, uh, in a sense that no, nobody can say uh, absolutely 100% something will happen like this but you you can calculate a lot of things regarding uh, regarding uh, mitigation and adaptation but you need to also be aware of different kind of uh, uncertainties that are associated with different kind of methodologies that you use uh, in this process the vulnerable urban sectors are recognized so you need to recognize and be aware what sectors are specifically vulnerable for different type of uh, for risks? Uh, you need to uh, uh, so risks and vulnerabilities of surrounding areas are taking into account. So all of the things that you are trying to do locally, you need to be aware that there's a wider impact of things that you are doing. And the main concerns that require an adaptation response are identified. So this this would be some kind of a checklist. Well, uh, I would also uh, say a light motif here is that you need to constantly reassess uh, 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 this checklist uh, and this assessment because things change. Uh, and it's very good to uh, implement different kind of sensitivity analysis where you can see uh, uh, certain boundary conditions and how they change with uh, the change of certain parameter uh, that you use in the uh, in the assessment. OK, uh, let's uh, let's now try to see maybe a few few examples. I think um, I'm OK with time. I think we will probably finish in around 10 minutes or so. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, so let's see. Uh, this is a good example. Uh, uh, one of Horizon 2020 projects did uh, a research on vulnerability of 5, uh, 571 European cities to climate and weather related hazards. So uh, uh, the, the cities were uh, uh, clustered according to their vulnerability to heat waves, uh, flooding and droughts. Uh, 
and according uh, to this analysis, it was very difficult to identify a clear special pattern uh, of vulnerability among European cities. Uh, of course, cities with a high level uh, uh, of uh, 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 cities of high level of vulnerability uh, 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 to all hazards uh, are mostly or most numerous are in uh, Central Europe, uh, Estonia, part of Germany, uh, uh, Latvia, Romania, but are quite scattered around the Europe. Uh, of course, for instance, cities that are more vulnerable to heat waves were mainly in in southern and central uh, 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 southern and 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 central uh, central EU. Uh, there are different kind of analysis like this. So if you want to uh, if you want to investigate, you will find you will find numerous examples. Uh, one very also uh, interesting uh, uh, research. Uh, is uh, climate risk uh, uh, typology on uh, NUTS uh, three level regions in Europe. Uh, we can maybe compare the two most interesting ones. So for instance, from our perspective, uh, let's say Croatian perspective, uh, this southern lands, Mediterranean uh, lands are very interesting. So uh, C, uh, uh, C uh, is uh, city type, so it's Mediterranean high density. Uh, K, uh, KH is a uh, uh, key hazard, so key hazard are uh, high temperatures, uh, droughts, wildfires, landslides, coastal hazards, etc. Uh, e is uh, uh, exposure, so uh, exposure here in the southern lands is uh, uh, higher than average exposure uh, of transport infrastructure, population to landslides, etc. Sensitivity, S is sensitivity, so it's relatively high, uh, higher than average uh, population. Uh, and uh, uh, AC is actually adaptation capacity, which here in, in southern lands is relatively low, lower than average GDP, uh, relatively low critical infrastructure provision, lower than average uh, innovation level. <coughs> Sorry. But we can now uh, check northern lands, for instance. Here, city uh, city types are low density, green cities, uh, small rural settlements. Uh, key hazards are coastal hazards, so heavy precipitation, low and high temperatures, uh, exposure uh, higher than average exposure, but sensitivity is low and adaptation uh, capacity is high. Why is adaptation capacity high here? Because high provision of critical infrastructure, high innovation level, uh, more uh, in, uh, local population is more included in the decision making process, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you can, uh, of course, I mean, if, if you want, you, if you have time, uh, you can uh, later on uh, go into into more uh, more details, but this kind of analysis are quite, uh, quite interesting and quite uh, informative. Uh, also, very interesting study. Uh, it was done by one of our partners in one of our uh, Horizon projects, uh, Vito Institute from Belgium, where they were trying to respond uh, to heat stress in uh, Antwerp city uh, based on detailed thermal mapping. So they were actually doing, uh, they were actually doing a very uh, detailed uh, thermal mapping. Uh, using uh, WBGT uh, temperatures during a hot summer day in Antwerp city center, and they were trying to uh, understand and trying to uh, propose different kind of adaptation measures from installation of uh, green roofs on new or renovated buildings, uh, 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 green parking lots, uh, increased albedo uh, on public buildings, so increased albedo effect on, on public buildings, Installing fountains, ponds, trees, and parks in renovated public spaces. So, different kind of uh, measures uh, uh, proposed based on uh, current heat atlas and uh, and current problem uh, uh, regarding uh, heat islands uh, within the uh, Antwerp city. Okay, at the end, uh, uh, just uh, a quick uh, go through. So. Uh, when it comes to risk and vulnerability assessment, it is actually an integral part of uh, SECAPS. So 
uh, GRC, uh, Joint Research Center from uh, a European Commission, uh, has drafted a guidebook how to develop a sustainability energy and climate action plan for cities. And within SECAP, so this uh, sustainable energy and climate action plan, you have uh, defined the, 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 the table of content, let's say, and you have uh, uh, summary strategy base, baseline emission inventory etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh, you have climate change risk and vulnerability assessment as an integrated part of secup and then you go to mitigation actions and then you go to adaptation actions and so on and so forth so basically uh, 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 climate change risk and vulnerability assessment is 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 very important because it's actually now a part of strategic uh, European documents, and it's a part of uh, local energy and climate planning for cities, municipalities, counties, etc. Okay, I will, I will sk skip uh, uh, emissions inventory because it's already eight o'clock, uh, and I would just stop here. So, uh, recommended literature. So, if you want to have more information, you always have this JRC guidebook. You have this. Uh, uh, urban adaptation uh, in Europe, how cities uh, and towns respond to climate change. It's from European Environmental Agency. Uh, and uh, I would stop here now and just very quickly uh, before I give the floor to Anna, uh, I will just, I promised that I would, uh, uh, I would uh, show you Uh, 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 just a second. Uh, st uh, sharing. Uh, if you want, you can you can check uh, you can check different kind of different kind of uh, setups and uh, uh, vulnerability uh, uh, risk and vulnerability assessment. So this is an example of uh, setup. So sustainable energy and climate action plan for the city of Belgrade. So here uh, you can see uh, it, it more or less follows the, the, the table of content that, that was defined in, in uh, JRC uh, guidebook. And we have this uh, risk and vulnerability assessment as an integral part of the, uh, of the local energy and climate planning. And if you go uh, a little bit more detail, we can see what kind of uh, what kind of hazards, climate hazards are defined for the city of Belgrade uh, within uh, sustainable energy and climate action plan. So uh, extreme heat, uh, extreme cold, droughts, heavy precipitation, and floods, storms, and then uh, uh, different kind of climate hazards affecting Bla Belgrade, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, check it out. I mean, if if you're interested, uh, interested, uh, a lot of cities, uh, uh, even now in the Western Balkan region, uh, have their SAPs. They have their SECAPs, so you can. You can check uh, maybe, uh, unfortunately, for instance, uh, uh, city of Skopje uh, only have has SAP, so Sustainable Energy Action Plan. Uh, uh, it, it, to my knowledge, it still doesn't have uh, a SECAP, so this climate change adaptation uh, is still not uh, a part uh, here. OK, uh, I would stop. Uh, I would stop sharing uh, my screen now. Uh, Anna can switch uh, now with the, the assignment. I will just uh, go uh, through the questions. Uh, OK. Thomas, I'll do, should I uh, switch to assignments now and then or, uh, and you will do questions afterwards or, or will you answer questions first? Uh, or? I, will, uh, I will go through questions now, but you can just uh, okay. switch. I stopped sharing so you can switch uh, to your presentation for the the assignments. Uh, and I, I can go through through the questions. So how come an earthquake can be in a group with? Ah, okay, uh, how can an earthquake be in a group with floods, droughts, fires? Uh, to be honest, I didn't notice that uh, that uh, uh, an earthquake is there, uh, but uh, that is probably because uh, uh, just a second, I'll go to the slide where it's uh, in where it is placed. So earthquake uh, is actually not a, 
uh, it, no, no, it, it's OK. Earthquake is earth hazard. It's not climate. Uh, it's not defined as a climate hazard. So it's if you look at the slide, it's uh, it's under uh, it's under uh, it's colored uh, brown. So it's earth hazard. Uh, it's not a climate uh, hazard, so it's it's not defined as a climate hazard. OK, does it, does it mean the risk assessment would be short term readiness for floods, for example, and would be long term? Yeah, you can you can define it like that. Yeah, uh, risk assessment. No, uh, no, actually, uh, it, it depends uh, how you uh, how you define things. So uh, uh, risk assessment would be yeah. So you are uh, you, you there's a risk of floods, but what is your vulnerability to those floods? So if if your city has some kind of, some kind of geotechnical uh, uh, measures already in place in the last uh, 50 years, then you were, you would be less vulnerable if you don't already have that. But that, of course, doesn't mean that uh, that you are uh, 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 that that you don't that you are not vulnerable. So that doesn't mean that you don't need to uh, continue with that. So, for instance, it's a typical example in Croatia for city of Karlovac, where they do have uh, spare channels that are built uh, in order to protect them from uh, floods, but due to uh, additional extremes, uh, they are becoming more intensified. And now, in the last five years, they were uh, building uh, uh, they were building uh, uh, additional infrastructure uh, to alleviate uh, uh, their risk of floods. So it 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 can be it can be uh, uh, thought like that. Are those models for risk assessment some kind of software? How does one get? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to risk assessment, uh, it it can be. As I said, uh, there are two uh, two ways of uh, how to uh, do uh, how to do the assessment. So you can do it uh, uh, based on indicator based approach, but you can. Uh, have more explicit approach where you build different kind of uh, models based on vast amount of uh, vast amount of uh, input data, uh, and you you get some kind of results. Uh, so uh, to be honest, uh, all the models that I know uh, are more or less in-house models that are done by different kind of uh, different kind of institutions, whether they are. Uh, whether they are uh, uh, some kind of uh, consultancy companies or they are some kind of institutes that are, do that are doing it. Uh, but I think there should be some commercial ones. But uh, actually, it, it, it's it's uh, if you're doing a, a detailed modeling of a certain geographical uh, position, then it's it's really custom made. It's not uh, a software where you can put in the, a few variables and, and get some result. Uh, maybe for uh, for the first part where you do uh, where you do some kind of indicator based approach where you can have a software with some kind of matrices that already give you uh, uh, some kind of outcome. But if you really want to do some kind of uh, uh, modeling uh, on a specific uh, geographical level, then it has to be tailor made. It has to be very, uh, very specific. Uh, who is not? I mean, uh, if uh, when it comes to doing RVAs, I mean, if you are uh, if you are structuring uh, a setup, then a consultancy company that would uh, structure a setup would basically structure an RVA as well. So. Uh, uh, Government can uh, produce different kind of climate uh, adaptation plans, whether uh, they are national or they are regional. So they can do that, but basically it's always done by some kind of consultancies or, uh, for instance, uh, we at the university uh, did do uh, some setups uh, for local governments and uh, in this, no, yeah. And in this uh, case, you can, you, you do the RVA uh, as well. Uh, 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 within that, uh, so there are different models. Uh, uh, very okay, so I understand there are different models, methodologies depending on what area, topic, the range, risk, as well as that. There is a solid, for example, 
Okay, this is a comment, so this is this is not a uh, this is not a question. Uh, okay, I think that I will. Okay, sorry, Surgeon. Uh, uh, is there is uh, RBA done internally or externally with my company? OK, I think uh, uh, for Angela, I think I more or less answered that in the in the previous uh, question. OK, can we have this? Aha, abbreviations. OK, I think I I think I uh, or I hope I uh, I uh, explained uh, all of the abbreviations, but uh, what I can do is uh, if we have a final version of the uh, of the presentation, we can check and see if there are something that is not uh, uh, aha, slide. Uh, I, I can check if there's something not defined in some of the slides. Do we have to define target area? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, you need to define uh, if you are doing a risk and vulnerability assessment within some kind of uh, SECAP or some kind of local energy and climate planning, then yeah, you need to have a uh, boundary condition uh, uh, and you need to have a clear uh, uh, limits uh, for uh, uh, RVA. Uh, slide 25, okay, just a second. Uh, slide 25. Ah, okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, I uh, I I didn't put uh, the. I I explained the. Uh, I explained the the uh, abbreviation on slide 25, but I didn't put them on the on the slide. So C is C type. Uh, K H uh, is uh, key hazard. Uh, e is uh, exposure, S is sensitivity, and AC is adaptation uh, adaptation capacity. But yeah, you're right. Uh, the, I'm sorry, they are not uh, uh, they are not defined on the slide. Uh, to Mladen, okay. So basically, you're using some software data to tell local government that climate change will be worse, and then. Uh, uh, and uh, when they have money, uh, they do something, and when they don't, they don't do anything. How much did it cost? Uh, I, to be honest, I have no idea how much Belgrade uh, paid for their setup uh, and uh, uh, their RVA. So it's, I. I but uh, since it's it's a, a city uh, or it's taxpayers' money, so they should probably have that uh, as a public information somewhere. But uh, to be honest, I have no idea. OK, <laughs> Yelena, OK, and maybe it's also worth having the this race. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, as I said uh, on the first slide, when I was trying to give you a, 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 a definition from the literature, it's it's one of the definitions. But you can have different kind of uh, different. You, you will find in the literature different kind of wording and different kind of definitions. But more or less, they they come down come down to the same uh, same thing. Uh, okay, I think that's. Uh, uh, OK, uh, the last question from Azra is actually for Anna because Anna will now take over with uh, with the assignment. Uh, she will discuss a little bit uh, assignment from uh, last week and she will go through the assignment uh, for uh, for this week. OK, so uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. I hope it wasn't too long and too boring. Uh, and. Uh, I greet you and I leave you uh, with Anna. So Anna, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Tomisov. First, I would like to answer to Azar's question. So unfortunately, yet yeah, there are two uh, teams, which I believe there are two teams which did not receive yet grading. The rest of you uh, received it during the day. Uh, and one important thing to note is that the deadline is extended. So the deadline is not anymore Wednesday midnight. It is uh, it is Sunday midnight. 
So you will have the end of this week uh, to make some adjustments. So first, um, regarding the assignment, I, as you, as all, I think also um, Dan communicated this with you, you have, you will have the opportunity to um, resubmit your assignment, to make some adjustments, because in this assignment, some of you have specific um, uncertainties and yeah, some of you complained that this assignment was too uh, challenging for you. So uh, in the assignments, there are uh, a lot of uh, teams which really did a great job and really make, um, I would say, perfect assignments. Uh, some of you had some uh, challenges and some parts which were not explained and explained it so well. So we can put the, um, we can group those, let's say, mistakes or shortcomings in the three groups. The first group is uh, the development of the baseline um, criteria assessment method. The second is development of smart measures. And the third one is the, the number of developed smart measures. Um, I would say that most of these assignments, um, maybe 50-50, but no, I think most of the assignments had the problem with the development of smart measures. So maybe this is also an issue from our side because we, at the last presentation, we did not explain you uh, how uh, how to develop smart criteria? You have this um, like uh, you have this literature at the learning platform. This is what I'm exactly uh, showing to you now. Uh, so you can also this is was also to some extent we wanted to enforce you to um, use the literature which is at the learning platform. So uh, just to very briefly explain how to develop the smart measures and how to develop the smart criteria is that. For each of the measure, and I explain this because each of the measure, because some of you had, uh, I think a few teams have the, had this uh, mistake. So uh, each of the measure which is proposed should should be specific. So it should define what will be accomplished, what actions will you take. It should be measurable. So it should say what data will be measured, the goal, how much, how well. It should be achievable. Is the goal doable? Do you have the necess necessary skills and resources? Uh, is it relevant? How does the goal align with the broader goals? And why is the result important? And it is time bound. What is the time frame for accomplishing this goal? As I repeated a uh, numerous times during the last presentation, we really don't expect from you the specific um, the specific date. So you don't uh, for all of the measures. You, you you can like I would say like made up the numbers. So we really don't expect that you provide some specific measures. But for us, it was important that you somehow learn how to develop those smart measures and um, smart measures like measures how to achieve those, how to improve those uh, criteria ESG, and also to write it in the form which I presented. Now I will be so um, now the second uh, when we talk about smart. Measures. The second most, uh, the most used, uh, mostly common mistake is that you develop one, uh, you propose one smart measure, uh, and you describe it in a great level of detail. So um, this this is uh, yeah a mistake because you, um, as written in the assignment, you should propose a five. Uh, smart measures, and uh, they don't need to be in such a level of detail like most of you who present uh, one measure. Um, so what was, um, and the, finally, the, the mistake, which I somehow ex expected uh, regarding what the questions that it will be the most common, but um, yeah, at the end, also those smart uh, measures were quite challenging to develop, is the development of baseline criteria assessment method. So. The development of baseline criteria assessment method is, as it's written in the text of the assignment, to propose a method to um, develop a base uh, to assess the baseline status or to assess the current performance. So I also included uh, the additional explanation of the form. I think that uh, most of you saw it, uh, but now I would like to present it on a one. Uh, a uh, very good example, very good team assignment. I hope that the team members will uh, will uh, be okay with that. I'm not sure their names, but I would really think this is one very great example on how to prepare this assignment. And also by 
I selected this as sample, even though there was really a, quite a lot of great team assignment, is because it's broad, it included what is, um, let's say, to maximum number of points, uh, uh, they received the maximum number of points, but they included everything what was asked in the assignment. So uh, some of you included in your assignments introduction, some of you uh, included the data on the current states, etc. This is, all, of course, always beneficial, but this was not required in the assignment. So this is just some um, additional, uh, yeah, additional value for your, for your assignment. So just to show it this, so uh, baseline criterion uh, calculation method, uh, they select the social ESG criteria, uh, criteria uh, and the selected factor was diversity, equ equity, and inclusion. Baseline criterion calculation method is for the diver diversity, equity, and inclusion factor, current performance will be assessed through the number of workers in ESG and M, tier production one, um, uh, tier one production supply chain in 2021 by gender ratio ratios as included below. So they here this team also included the numbers, but this is not, as I said, this was not required to include the numbers, the data, because I understand that for some companies you cannot find those data. But this is the proposed baseline criteria calculation method because they propose a, ba uh, a method which uh, can be used to uh, define a baseline um, baseline status or the current status of the company in regard to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then they uh, propose five smart strategies and five smart measures. And for each of these measures, uh, they included a specific description. So here it is increased the ratio of female supervisor in the tier one production supply chain to uh, to minimum 40% by offering equal promotion and training opportunities to every employee regardless of their gender. It is a how this measure is measurable. So uh, here, I will not go now, now read everything, but here you can see um, why I selected this example. Uh, so, and why this is achievable, this why this is relevant and time -bound. So it included all segments of what smart measure should include. Uh, and uh, this was done for five measures. So this is one really excellent assignment. And um, I think it was not very time intensive because this team made um, this team made specifically what was asked in the in the assignment. Uh, okay, now I explained this. Um, yes, you as you received, I'll just repeat as you received in your comment, you can also uh, resubmit your assignment in case if you want to improve your assignment. And uh, I would just highlight once again that um, the deadline is extended and that you will have time until Sunday. Um, now I would like to ask, uh, do you have some additional questions? Uh, and yeah, the, what Azra asked, um, uh, you will receive the, the, the mm -hmm. okay, oh, sorry, I just, uh, I did not, <laughs> uh, just a sec, I, I did not mention the, I did not notice the comments, okay. Uh, okay, it's March, that's not measures. I know from I don't know what you mean for okay. Baseline criteria uh, calculation method. Okay, sorry, Ivana, I just noticed your now um your uh, comment. I think that um I think that uh, I think that I answered with your question. I answered uh, your question uh, here when I gave an example. Okay, my team uh, did write five, but in the feedback you wrote, we have only one. Maybe the uh, maybe the issue here is that um, you included five measures, which were, let's say, drowned in the, in one description of the smart measures. So, uh, as I explained here, um, if you have uh, five, um, you have five measures. Each of them, for each of them, should be written how they are specific, measurable achievable, relevant, and time-bound. So um, it is not, this is not the same as if you have like specific and then listed five measures, measurable, and then listed like five bullets, uh, relevant because it usually it is not, sometimes I, I check 
it is not it doesn't uh, relate to the second you just some of the teams just um some of the teams put those bullets but they are not uh, like linked to the i don't know second bullet to the second measure if this is maybe if there is maybe a mistake you can also write them you can also write us mm. why did you say we need to do part if it does not say this in the assignment how can we uh uh just a sec yes it is it is written in the assignment so uh yeah maybe this is just some miscommunication but it's written so yeah it's because there are five s uh, that's why five uh okay i even i do not fully understand your comment but maybe yeah this is the reason why some people wrote one measure because there are five um five um five letters Okay, uh, so uh, if where did you say we did? Okay, so if uh, you um, if you have maybe also some additional questions, you can also, uh, you can still write in chat, and you can also contact us via by email. Uh, now I would like to go on the team assignment for this week, and uh, just a small notification: um, we receive comments from some members that um for them this is a quite this is quite um yeah it's uh, quite time intensive and uh, because there was also a continuation from course one to course two and that there was no uh there was no um some time to uh yeah have a break that um for some of you it is it is too much so uh, because we of course uh care about uh, your um about your feedback uh the um, second assignment is uh the, uh the assignment this week is a bit lighter than it was described on the forum so i want to go on the this team assignment just a sec mm -hmm. okay I hope that now you can see just how she so I can. I hope that now you can see um, the slide. So um, this team assignment is um, to develop, but very very um, light version of risk and vulnerability assessment. Here I included a uh, description that this is based on the guidelines of the Joint Research Center. A basic risk and vulnerability assessment should be performed. But what? Um, what you can use here is that uh, those guidelines, which also Thomas have included in the presentation and which are included in the learning platform, are just for you to get, get inspired. So you don't really need to, of course, follow all of the uh, requirements uh, because, of course, this is a very short time and uh, you are here just hearing for the first time for the risk and vulnerability assessment. But it will be very good if you check the literature to get inspired. So first, you should select a certain area uh, because this is um, a team assignment for of this course, and we don't expect, of course, for you to um, um, to uh, to spend a lot of time on this. You don't need to do this on the state level, on the municipal level, like it is usually done. You can select the you can select the um, uh, you can select uh, the the area which you which you want. Here we recommend the city district. You can um, select whatever you want. I included here um, on the picture on the right. Um, this is the main square of in the Zagreb. So, for example, for this uh, we can develop a risk and vulnerability assessment. Uh, so in your assignment, we will uh, kindly ask you to include the figure of the area, Google satellite figure of the area or some short description on the area which you consider. Then based on the, for the certain area, you should define considered type of climatic extreme. So for example, uh, for this area, uh, we see there is a lot of, uh, this is square, um, there are not a lot of trees, uh, but there are a lot of people, there are a lot of trams, etc. So, for example, here, uh, urban heat islands uh, can be considered type of climatic extreme. You need to select uh, one. So you can add more, but one is sufficient to for this assignment. 
Okay, so uh, uh, you should, um, based on select the sort of select area, you should develop a conclusion table on the risk and vulnerability assessment that includes a sector affected by the considered type of clim climatic extreme. And here, just check the table because I will also include it in the forum, but this is the table, what your summit actually should look like or regarding the risk and vulnerability assessment. So you should, um, you should first select which sectors are affected by the considered type of climatic extreme. So here, uh, here uh, we included more sectors. So there is building, transport, energy management, water, waste management, land use planning, agriculture and forestry, environment and biodiversity, healthcare, civil protection, and emergency service industry. So for example, for the heat islands, uh, the, the sector which is uh, affected by this, can, can we can say this is a healthcare, or we can say it's also civil protection and emergency services. So um, you should also include the current risk, the current risk level. Of course, you don't, we don't expect that you uh, obtain some specific data, uh, you can tell it from your, from, yeah, you can like uh, tell from your, um, so let's say experience or from, from your experience in general um, with, with a different type of uh, climate extremes. Uh, you can also, of course, consult the literature. There are quite a lot of, um, um, there are quite a lot of climate um uh, climate studies on the current state and not all the future states, but this is just additional and you don't, we don't expect to do that. Uh, just the idea is just that you get familiar with risk and vulnerability assessment and that you check also the literature which, deal, which deals with this. Uh, so uh, your improve your uh, knowledge on this. Um, okay, so uh, the current thing here, you can usually include, as I said, current uh, risk level. You should include expected intensity change, expected frequency change. So, like intensity is, um, is it? Do we expect that the days, for example, will be uh, much hotter, or do we expect that it will be mildly hotter, etc.? Uh, this is also expected frequency change. So, for example, do we expect that the number of hot days? will change by like, I don't know why, one day per summer, or do we expect that it will change by 20 days per summer? Uh, what is the effect, effect level? For example, if we have urban heat islands, uh, what is the, when the, we have a higher temperatures, what is the expected level on human health, on the healthcare? We can also say that then this will be moderate or it can be high or it can be low. So uh, you you here you should use this um, terminology which is presented. So current risk level low, moderate or high, expected in intensity change probably unlikely, very likely, etc. Expected frequency change probably unlikely, very likely. Expected effect level moderate, low, uh, high, etc. And also what also Thomas mentioned, the framework is something like this: expected is it current? Or do we expect it in the short term or do we expect it in the long term? So to recap what I said until now, you need to um, select uh, you need to select a certain area. You need to define considered time of climatic stream. So uh, in the summit, we expect screenshot of the area type of climatic extreme. You need to include a table like this, which um, which includes uh, the sectors, current risk level, expected intensity change, expected frequency change, expected effect level, and the time frame, and also only for the sectors which are expected to be affected with this. Uh, okay, so uh, based on this uh, risk and vulnerability assessment, uh, we, we expect that each team should propose for at least four adaptation measures. So in the, uh, in the, um, um, on the website, you now see the um, on the website you now see the six adaptation measures, but we um, we yeah, uh, increased uh, decreased the number of measures to four. Uh, as as also in the previous example, you can be um, you can be innovative. You can say some ideas you have, and you can propose those adaptation measures. Or you can get inspired by other risk and vulnerability assessment and other examples. 
So here we included the setups, uh, the, the web page of the Covenant of Mayors, uh, where you can see their setups, and then you can get inspired because in the setups are usually re, uh, are included the risk and vulnerability assessment and also the adaptation measures. So um, this is the theme. This is your team assignment for this week. Um, this is the team assignment for this week. Uh, so are there any questions for this team assignment? Um, well, we maybe, okay, and oh, I'm sorry. I see that Angela did not answer your, um, your second part of the question uh, regarding the verse. I just noticed this. So uh, the, the number of verse is, let's say, recommended, but it's not obligatory to, to fit under the, the presented number of words. Uh, okay. I don't see at this moment any questions. So uh, to wrap up, uh, the deadline for the second assignment and also for this assignment is Sunday. Uh, for this assignment, you need to uh, select the, the, the certain area. You need to define why type one type of climate extreme. You need to uh, you should develop this table, uh, and we should include the sectors affected by the considered type of climate extremes and also current risk level, expected intensity change, expected frequency change, and expected effect level, and the time frame. Uh, the team assignment should also include the at least four adaptation measures. Uh, okay, so. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, I see that. I see that I just didn't. The questions didn't uh, come to me. Sorry, um, because when I share my screen, then in some place. Uh, aren't smart goals usually no? It usually, I mean, it depends. But in this segment, it was not asked uh, to usual because there are different types of measures, and that they should not be um, that include everything. Do not. Understand the feedback if you close the okay. Ah, you you don't understand the feedback. For example, if you close the description of the assignment, we can just grade it. Um, okay, so for example, maybe in case if you have um, that some description is missing in your assignment, uh, then uh, then what this is uh, in the first in the first part of your uh, feedback. It was written what is, uh, it was written what, uh, what, which description is missing. So in case if you, if you would like to improve your grading and if you would like to include the additional description, uh, then, of course, then we will adjust the grading and we will increase your number of points. Um, Okay, Yelena, if we select, for instance, Belgrade, which literature should we focus on? What should we search and where to better understand the problem? Uh, okay, so um, you can, um, regarding the methodology and how this should be done, you it doesn't really make a big difference on uh, which city you select. So the methodology um, is, the same no matter city or no matter which city you select. In case if you want to uh, check for some climate data, then um, you you can check usually the data are included by the national uh, metro meteorology um, centers. So those data are usually included there. But for regarding the guidelines on how to develop, you can also um, you can also uh, you can also check the literature which from GRC, which Tom is presented. Do you necessarily need to check to be written there? Yes. And uh, no, uh, this is um, this is uh, our, for Anna. Uh, uh, for Anna, uh, you if uh, you can check with me in case if you have some like in case if you have some um, in case. If you have some misunderstanding, uh, misunderstanding uh, for the assignment, uh, you can check, but you, know, you, you don't need to. Uh, okay, it's just a sec. Just a sec. 
should be no adaptation measures don't need to be smart they just need to be included uh, uh they just the, the adaptation don't need to be smart so those smart measures are for uh, uh those smart measures oh sorry uh just a sec i think that maybe you lost me for a second because my head my head set stop working so the adaptation measures do not be like written in the forms on the smart measure they just need to be uh they just need to be um presented they just need to be yeah listed and uh, proposed uh hoo, 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 cash, um just a sec the five measures I, it was yeah, it was written in the presentation it's also written at the platform as well for me and uh Okay, so regarding the deadline extension, the deadline, the additional deadline extension will affect the future deadlines. Uh, so um, for this that for this deadlines, Dev, uh, Tomislav and I we were involved in the two two weeks, but the but the maybe this will be a problem for the next teach next presenter. Um, this maybe to to the um, to let's say that maybe this task seems challenging because you are now hearing about some terms which you never hit before but when you when you took into consideration that you don't really need to be based on the concrete data that um in fact this your assignment is to include a sec um a specific target data and to fulfill this table and to and which doesn't need to be for all sectors and that um uh, you need to propose a four adaptation plan, uh, four adaptation measures, uh, and you really have a lot of literature of, on adaptation measures, uh, then this is not so challenging. Um, I will check with Dan at um, SecOps are a great source, yeah, for, for getting, yes, for uh, getting inspired. So SecOps are, um, I would highly recommend you to use them. Uh, but also GRC guidelines are also very good to use. Uh, Melissa, regarding your question, sorry. Uh, regarding your question, I should check this also with Dan and also with the next professor before answering to you because, yeah, um, this can affect other other um, other deadlines as well. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay, I don't see now some additional questions. Maybe I missed. Okay, so you don't need to propose the target area by email. You just uh, select. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, the the um, basic. Yes, of course, Ivana. So the, you don't. You uh, you need to make your assignment much simpler because the risk and vulnerability assessments in general are very high, very time demanding. So uh, so you don't need to include all the, the steps they have. You just um, need to, to to include these parts which are included in the presentation. Okay, okay, thank you. That makes sense. Okay, Milton, I'm happy to hear that. Okay, so. Um, you, we are open. Uh, we, uh, in case like for the previous assignments, if in case if you have some questions, feel free to send it, send this, them to us or to us at the forum, and we will be happy to provide you additional. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Azra, it is stated, but we will uh, just the on the platform. It is not updated version uh, because we we have the the additional change of the team assignment was to make it this team as, this week team assignment lighter because you had this uh, some of you uh struggle a bit with uh bit with the previous assignment so that's why we uh, we made your some simpler so the for current um uh the uh, the current the current uh is um 
the current uh, version is not updated, but it will be as soon as possible. Okay. Um, okay, yeah, I can make you, I can update the, uh, we can update and also uh, you can check, we will, we will send in the forum uh, some concrete suggestions for, uh, for Simon. So yeah, we'll do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't see any questions more. Okay, but we are also maybe when you start to work on the assignment that some new questions will arise. So, uh, yeah, so we will, you're welcome, Elena. So we will um, also maybe include something additional on the, on the forum or you can be able to also answer to your, uh, to your emails. Okay, thank you all once again. Uh, and yeah, we'll be in touch and yeah. Uh, good luck with your assignments. We are here to, to help you if needed. Bye.